Hello everyone, this is Lam. Welcome to my channel and thank you for watching another one of my videos. Today I am going to do another mallet smash. It, I actually did this several months ago. I think it's like five months ago, but I just got around to edit this one. And I I am just loading my cup up in my usual manner, starting with the blue and then turquoise. A blue cobalt blue metallic turquoise and then uh, grass green and then envy green and then some gold another tone of gold and then I'm just going to splash it on while well, I stir it up a little bit first and splash it on and the reason I waited so long to edit this one is because I've had so many Mallet Smash videos out and I feel like they are kind of all the same same but I still think this one has something new to offer. Like this one, I am taking a more deliberate approach to the composition. That's why I'm not just, smash, uh, just splashing them any way I want. I am kind of keeping them into a line because I want to create a vine that is coming down. I don't want to cover the whole canvas. This is a 10 by 20 canvas. And also this one, I am incorporating some calm rack with it. And see, I am just drawing semicircles with the calm. So it's kind of a little bit of a rippling effect it's hard to see in the video, but in the real painting, it's a little bit more apparent. And I don't want the line to be very thick because I want this painting to be more delicate. See, I'm using a fork too, just to add a little bit of the smaller circles. So I'm taking more of a compositional approach to this painting. See, I'm dipping the fork, I'm dipping the fork into some of the colors and then drawing it out so that I have different size circles, not just one size. See, I want a tiny one here, there. So I get those comb rack out of the way first, and then I use a cup to kind of draw some, I'm trying to draw some like hanging vine. No, I didn't like that. So fill that in. And then trying again. I have, I have not done this before, so I'm just feeling my way out how to do it. See, I'm trying to do kind of like grapevine, kind of that kind of look, but not quite because it's going to be a vine of ivies. But I just want it to be not just leaf and leaf and leaf. Like the last painting I did of this nature, I did a whole wall of ivy, but this time I want it to be more delicate with more negative space. So at this point, I think the hanging vines are pretty good now. So I'm putting some white over so that when I pound it, there will be variegation. See, so I'm doing my mallet smash leaves. And remember, I always start from the bottom and work my way up. You see what a deliberate effort I was making. I was like weighing, okay, should I pound here or should I pound there? And I try not to disturb the calm lines too much. Okay, so I did kind of the bottom bind. Now I keep working my way up. Now I'm just mostly doing 
kind of the outside leaves, but I'm leaving the center kind of untouched because I want to do some flowers there. Okay, so I here off off the center I'm preparing for my flower mix. So well first of all I need to pick out some globs or some hair and then I pound it a little. And then I'm preparing my pink and whatever flower mix off screen. Okay, I feel that there's a spot there that I can utilize. So I am doing my purple and red and magenta, gold, and more gold. And then a little bit of metallic white. Now that is going to be my first flower. Okay, take out my cotton balls and start it, you know, randomly just rolling it until I get kind of like a flower petal shape. And of course, it's not going to be get done. It's not going to be done in one shot. I always, I usually have to try like a few times, and I may come back to it later. So I'm going to make a few flowers. I don't know how many yet at this point. But I'm just looking for spots that I can utilize to put flowers in. And I want them to have variations of shapes and and directions. I don't want them to all you know, square and facing the front. I want them to face like different directions and also have different sizes to add variety. Because variety is good. We don't want the composition to be all same and same. That is boring. Okay, so I think that one looks pretty good. So let's get ready for another one. This one is going to be slightly bigger. Then, of course, after I smash it with the cotton balls, it usually end up smaller than the puddle that it started with. to make sure that I wipe off the cotton balls, I mean the saran wrap around the cotton balls, I have to wipe them off real good. And don't be afraid to touch it out with your fingers. Our hands are our best tools. Okay, so it looks like it has a nice progression of sizes with the flowers and now what i am doing off screen is that i am actually putting a petal down on my wax paper a flower um, a petal of the flower colors and i'm dipping my cup into that petal and i'm trying to use my cup to make a little flower off the side where there's an empty space and there's so many different ways to make flowers and if we have all these different techniques at our disposal then we can pick and choose what we want to use for different effects 
So here I'm doing mostly finger dipping. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Just dipping my fingers in the paint and started touching up. So and then I'm constantly looking at the overall composition to see if that's enough or that's too much. Because that is a balancing act. Now I am using whatever little bit of leftover paint in the leaf cup that I pour from. I just drawn. I just added a few drops there and then add some white on top because I want to pound more leaves there. There, one, two, three. More? No. No, three is enough. And I'm using my finger to drag the color up a little bit so that it looks more connected to the leaves about. So they look integrated instead of separated. So that looks okay. Now let's move on to the next section. Here I'm putting down a lot of deep purple or violet. And then the next color, I'm going to make a big flower there. Yes, move on to a brighter purple and then the red will come next. Yes. Okay, and then magenta, gold, more gold, and then the metallic white. See, for flowers, I like to use metallic white because it has a translucency and it gives a dreamy kind of look to the flower after it dries. Okay, so that is the big flower. So I started from little ones, moving my way up to the big ones. Of course, I messed up that one a little bit, so I needed to fix it. And I also wanted to make it a little bit bigger so that the size would match more it, so the size changes wouldn't be so, uh, so sudden and that is the time consuming part because the mallet smash goes really fast you just smash 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 and it's done but making flowers really takes time because you want to get it right um, not so much about getting it right but getting it to the shape you like and sometimes it takes a few tries sometimes you need to go back and fix a few things but that is the nature of things Here, add a little bit more magenta with my fingertip, and then adding some white with my fingertip. Yeah, trying to get the paint to move where I want and it didn't quite do it so I'm adding more white okay I'm going to 
make that petal bigger. And sometimes I use the bamboo stick to draw it a little bit when I need a really fine point. One more flower up there. There really isn't a lot of room left for me to make flowers. So I could have stopped right there, but I decided to make one more. Because again, it's about variety. I don't want it to be too predictable. See, I have this curve of flowers going that way. So I want to break that curve with one going the other way. I think that creates a little bit more interest in the composition and it is little detailed I mean it probably doesn't make that much difference but it makes a difference to me those little nuances That is my usual manner. I like to, when I make flowers, I like to draw the petals in first and then I work on the center. Because a good center is essential for a flower. It determines its direction and it also, it, it is just, uh, it, makes it look like a flower. But that one doesn't seem to be cooperating. That's why I keep fussing and fussing with it. details now I'm going to pound on more leaves because once I get the flowers in place I want to work on the leaves above them to cover some of them up so that they look like they are integrated with the vine instead of the flowers just sitting on top of the leaves okay so that I think that looks pretty good. So I have a vine that is going down in kind of a curve. Then I have flowers. Okay, so I'm just looking at details at this point. And some of the comrade lines have been disturbed. So I try to fix that with the bamboo stick. You gotta be really careful about that. Cause little debris here and there and that is with the mala smash that sometimes paints fry around and we may need to touch up a little bit the torch for most part there are not too many bubbles but it's always good to torch and anything else that I want to add Okay, I decided to use my bamboo stick to draw out one more line. Yes, just one line. No more. So I think this whole thing looks pretty good. And I am still thinking if I should add some more, but decided not to. It's done. Better not mess with it anymore. So this is the finished painting. And... I'm pretty happy with it because I think 
it is one of the pieces that I exercise control. I didn't overdo it. So that is very rare for me. And I am proud of myself. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. And if you like this video, please comment, share, and subscribe. And also, please check out my Facebook group. I have some pouring videos that is live that I broadcast live there that you can watch and uh, I'll also do more live pouring over there in the future and the link is in the description box okay there uh, thank you very much for watching I really appreciate your support you have a great day I'll see you next time bye